I'm surprised I hadn't heard of Starlift, and I'm also surprised that there are not that many reviews for it on IMDb, because it's really quite fabulous with an amazing cast. It does get a little monotonous and hard to kind of stay engaged towards the end, but then it picks up again. But honestly, I did truly thoroughly enjoy it. This was released in 1951, directed by Rydal Ruth, with screenplay by John D. Clorer and Carl Kamm. It does have a great plot that I think that is executed very well, for the most part. But what makes this amazing is, is the cast. The poster advertises this as having 18 stars in it. Now, I'm not familiar with every single one of them. But the ones that I was the ones that I was kind of previously familiar with really made this great. The the only reason this film came on my radar is because of Doris Day. I love her more than life, and her role in this is brilliant. She kind of stops being in it after the halfway mark, at least as much, which is a shame. And I don't know, maybe that's why I found it a little less engaging once it kind of. I don't. I just feel like it became monotonous, and I'll try and explain what I mean by that once I tell you what it's actually about. <laughs> without spoiling anything and um, but Doris Day is in it Gordon McRae uh Jean Nelson the absolutely fabulous James Cagney who is barely in it but he's in it nevertheless and I think he's just amazing so the description from IMDb is as follows to impress a movie star a US Air Force crewman pretends he is soon to be soon to see combat when his lie gets out chaos ensues so he does lie and he does this to kind of, well, I guess get the attention of one of the stars of the show at the beginning of the film. And these women, these actresses, including Doris Day and some of the others, go to the Air Force unit to see a lot of the men before they get shipped out. And there's some wartime spirit and, you know, a little bit of heartache with people going out to war, they may not come back. And it's a little bit manipulative, to be perfectly honest. But this is a, a musical comedy, for the most part. And that's certainly true for the first half. It's quite funny, it's entertaining. Um, a lot of the guys are, are... They have great personalities that are easy to get on with. But then, after the first half, it becomes a little bit monotonous some of the personalities begin to... Well, certainly with me, they began to kind of rub me up the wrong way. It became very repetitive. We had a lot of different performances, which were great. Um, particularly, Doris Day sang Wonderful, which is one of my favourite of her songs. It's absolutely gorgeous. And we had some you know, musical numbers, dance numbers, all very engaging, but far too long. Like, it, it stops the plot from moving forward. There was this one skit where somebody was pretending to be a chef and it was comedic and it was entertaining to begin with but then it just got it just carried on and on and I just thought when is this going to end so I think the film has some issues with pacing the actual development of the narrative the rate at which this lie was revealed I thought was pretty good it gave us enough time to carry the lie but then once it was revealed there was still enough time left to kind of unpack that and see how people would react and how they were going to resolve it or not. So in terms of the markers for the main plot points, I think they were pretty good. But actually getting to those points, it just kind of took a little bit... It wasn't done the best way possible. So the first half was quite enjoyable. The second half, maybe the final third, was just really slow and not very engaging. And then towards the end, it kind of picked up again. What I really loved about this is that Doris Day played herself. Gordon McRae played himself. James Cagney played himself. Most of the stars who were being stars in this played themselves. And I think that was a really lovely thing because I'd never seen that before from a film, you know, from from the 50s. It's, it's not something that I'd kind of come across that far back. So that was really interesting and... You know, seeing them playing exaggerated versions of themselves just gr great fun. And as a Doris Day fan, I enjoyed that a lot. The music in this is beautiful. It does have a great wartime feel to it. It is pitched as a musical. And there are a couple of good songs in this. But I wouldn't really say it's a musical as such. For example, if I were to see this on stage, I don't think there are enough musical numbers in this to make it a musical. But the soundtrack is very nice. The costumes are beautiful some great dialogue, some good wit 
from our US Air Force men. Apart from the blip in the middle, I'd say it's still pretty entertaining and very engaging. It's only got 421 reviews on IMDb, which is significantly less than I would have expected, specifically for a cast of this quality. Certainly, Cagney and Doris Day and um, Gordon McRae make this very appealing. But whatever the reason, it just hasn't seemed to exist as a... It doesn't seem to exist as a, a great classic, and I guess... I guess the poor execution of the narrative halfway through may be a good reason for that. But I would still recommend it. I would definitely still recommend this film. It is good fun. When it's good, it's very, very good in the bits that it does well, which is most of the film are done fantastically well. Obviously, if you're a Doris Day fan, you have to watch this without question. Starlift, although not perfect, is still better than I expected and one that I probably would happily watch again.